All righty. So with that, I wanted to introduce Wayne from Infinera, who's going to talk to us about SDN and the transport network. And the button, where are the buttons? Oh, Sorry. I can hold that. OK. I can hold this. All right, thank you very much. I'm Wayne Walford from Infinera. I'm going to talk about SDN and particularly bring it into the transport network. Can you hear me in the back? OK. <laughs> i turn it up a bit. All right. So SDN, why is the industry interested in SDN, right? Well, as you guys, and you guys I think are all probably very familiar with SDN being in the uh, data centers primarily, right? You know, we, in the data centers, you've taken uh, and virtualized computers, computing power, um, data storage, and then started to do that with networking, right? So that allowed you to bring IP routers, Ethernet switches into um, the business applications, orchestration of those resources to be closer aligned with your business, uh, giving you, you know, basically virtualizing those resources, making them programmable, getting a global view, right? Uh, so you can be optimal um, and getting application driven, right? So basically getting application control over the infrastructure, the, the data net infrastructure in the data centers. Now we're looking to extend that um, paradigm, those learnings, those technologies into the transport network. Now there's some interesting differences between the packet world, which is most, where most of SDN has gone, uh, done so far, and the transport world. First of all, there's a technology difference that I think most people understand. Packets connectionless, right? It's dynamic flows, right? Transport is connection oriented, static pipes traditionally, right? But the other interesting aspects is, you know, what you've seen in the packet world is a lot of control planes, vendor specific control planes, really automating a lot of features. Whereas in the transport world, you really haven't seen that so much until just recently, right? You've seen more of a paradigm of, uh, individual cross connects being made primarily by a management system, right? A management system would create the path, would, you know, have an end in view, you know, and then each individual element would be told what to do. Um, other hand, if we look at the packet world, these systems have had a lot of automation, but they've typically been very closed. That is, there has been very little programmability from the outside. Where in the transport system, again, we haven't seen so much of the control plane paradigm, but we definitely have seen open and programmable interfaces. Uh, primarily because it's coming from a telco background, and they had big OSSs that they wanted to, to use across their uh, infrastructure. So if you look at, you know, the motivations for extending uh, SDN to the transport world, first of all, you see, you know, today's SDN is primarily around the data center and around the IP network in the data center, right? And then tying, you know, basing a lot on applications to see that network control that network and, and, uh, and virtualize that network. So now, to extend it to the transport domain is to bring the, you know, that transport OTN, which is uh, layer one switching, DWDM, which gives you huge scale on, on fiber, into that network as well. In addition, typically, right, at the transport layer, you start to see the multi-domain problem. Most networks that have multiple domains are tied together at the transport network. So when you talk about going to transport domain, uh, SDN, bring SDN into transport, you also think of not only multi-vendor, multi-layer, but you think about multi-domain. And if we can bring SDN into the transport layer, right, you'll get, you know, we'll be able to do multi-layer optimization, IP, transport layer, and multi-domain optimization, right, and then allow the applications, right, to really drive the usage of those, uh, those resources. Again, um, not only multi-layer, but also multi-domain. So the central sort of aspect or uh, uh, to the uh, bringing transport SDN into the transport is basically an, a transport SDN controller, right? This provides you the orchestration, it provides you the virtualization of the, the transport resources, you know, abst provides a network, an abstraction of that network to the business applications um, so that it can, they can basically orchestrate and uh, use the resources. Um, one of the keys here, we believe, is, though, is that 
you know, transport networks have gotten much more intelligent in recent years, bringing in more, more capabilities, bringing in you know, more than just DWM, which means you're trying to manage waves, but bringing in um, switching technology, bringing in packet uh, functionality, right? so that you can now access, instead of looking at a transport network as waves, you can look at that as a pool of bandwidth that can be used. Bringing in intelligent control planes allows you to have better control over that. Right? So we believe it's important that we actually virtualize that transport network to the SDN controller as well. Right? So that will allow us, makes the programming, the creation of S, the transport uh, controller much easier. Right? So you can then try to get to that multi-domain um, uh, management that we were talking about earlier. Right? So we're looking to get you know, their multi-layer, multi-vendor, multi-domain integration uh, and abstraction to the business applications so you can get much more flexible and rapid bandwidth usage, right? Uh, much more global optimization of the resources, right? And much more speed uh, of the new services or of the bandwidth or how you want to use that bandwidth or how that business applications want to use that uh, bandwidth. So I talked about a transport um, SDN controller. I wanted to give uh, some, some uh, concepts of what the scope of that can look like. And the Open Networking Foundation has done some use cases there that I, I was going to present. All right, so the first one is a pure enterprise network application, right? So where the SDN controller is in the enterprise, the IP network is in the enterprise, the uh, DWM, the transport network, is in the enterprise. In this case, the SDN controller base is able to orchestrate all those uh, resources um, uh, on its own. Second case is where a network provides a transport layer. So the enterprise is providing the IP network. There's an enterprise uh, SDN controller. The transport network is provided by a network provider. They have an, basically a network provider controller that's then put an abstraction, abstracting uh, um, view of that network to the enterprise. So for example, a virtual private network. Right? Maybe you present just part of the network um, of the overall transport network the part that that enterprise has control over and can use. And then the, the enterprise controller there is then orchestrating the IP network and basically that virtual network. Uh, and the third case is where both the transport and the packet network is being provided by a service provider, right? And the service provider there would also be providing the optimization between the packet layer and the transport layer, right? And then the you know, they're presenting a higher level abstraction to the enterprise and the SDN controller in the enterprise, right, of basically of the packet network optimized for the transport network as well. So those basically gives you a scope of, of, the, of how the transport SDN can fit into the different business uh, scenarios. Sort of key a, uh, aspect to transport, bringing SDN into the transport network beyond the controller itself is an open transport switch, basically a virtual, a lightweight virtual switch abstraction of the switch that we call the open transport switch, right? That basically abstracts the network element, simplifies it, and presents this a more uh, uh, generic abstracted view to the SDN controller. You know, covering uh, resource, uh, uh, topology discovery, the connectivity, um, uh, monitoring of services, that uh, are created and provisioning through OpenFlow. Right. With the SDN model, there also is a couple ways you can control that. Right. One is what we call the explicit model. This is a very traditional sort of telco, I'll call it a telco model, um, where the SDN controller goes to each individual node and makes each individual you know, cross-connect, right, hop by hop provisioning. Right. Um, and I, a lot of the enterprise SDN um, is doing that, that same model. Second model is what we call implicit model, where in a domain, you basically get the whole domain abstracted up to the controller. So the controller doesn't have to do node by node, it only needs to do so domain by domain. Each domain there is, is presented as a black box uh, to the SDN controller. This really facilitates, much, 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 makes it much easier to have a multi uh, dom domain orchestration, right? Much easier to create an SDN controller that can control multi-vendor's equipment 
um, and then orchestrate across multiple domains, really leveraging the existing the control planes that are emerging in uh, transport networks. So you have these two models, one you know, basically hop by hop, second one where you're using the intelligence of, you know, in this case, the transport network to make it simpler for the uh, SDN controller, but I think it allows you overall to get a more complex orchestration over multiple vendors, multiple domains, more, multiple technologies. So now I'm going to talk about a couple data center, for, data center related applications. First, I'm going to talk about with a uh, network uh, service provider providing on the network. Secondly, where the enterprise controls the uh, network itself. And in the second case, we actually have a demo that we did with ESNet. So I'm going to talk about um, uh, that demo in particular. So here we have a model where the uh, network service provider provides the network. A subset of that network is abstracted, right? A virtual private network is uh, uh, being managed by the uh, client controller, right? You can basically do bandwidth on demand with that model, right? You can see you have a, a subset of the network. You have bandwidth that uh, you have rights to configure. You can use the SDN um, controller to configure that. Right. That same model can be used for other services, right? For network as a service, where the whole network is being um, outsourced to the cloud, right? Ability to increase bandwidth for uh, uh, packet uh, VPNs, and reconfiguring the network in case of application router failure, for example, right? You can have a router fails, you might have a backup router or an in for one router uh, backup, and if a router fails, I just basically reconfigure the transport network all the flows that were, all the circuits that were going to the, rack, the uh, router that fails, now can just go to, oh, sorry, uh, the router uh, that I have as my backup. And it can be pretty much, from an IP layer, right, it can be basically transparent. Right? You, know, you don't have any change of the topology in that case. Right? Um, you can also do, you know, basically, um, as I mentioned, bandwidth on demand, you can do time of day. You might want to change how much bandwidth goes to different data centers. You know, as, you know, as you with virtualized data centers today, right, use d different resources and different data centers based on time, cost of day, uh, co time of day, the cost, right? You can use, you know, you can modify the transport network um, uh, to facilitate that, getting more bandwidth at different parts of the network, different data centers at different time of the day. So now I'm going to talk about the, uh, the demo with ESNet. So ESNet has a very large network in the U.S connecting um, a large number of research, uh, government and commercial research labs, a lot of data, um, you know, 10 petabytes of data a month, and th that network is growing 10 times every four years. One of the issues they have is they have a lot of, you know, typical business applications, sh short, biz, uh, short, bursty applications, uh, but they also have a lot of really big data flows that uh, related to the scientific uh, nature of uh, high energy physics. And those flows in a normal IP network will basically just, just crush all those small bursty applications. So their solution for that was to have an SDN controller that allowed them to do bandwidth on demand. So when you have the big flows, right, you can make a reservation between the two endpoints. Actually, we go to the next slide here. Sorry. Right. So this is the, uh, the GUI for their SDN controller. Uh, so here you can basically have a, your originator and destination. You can reserve a certain amount of bandwidth. You can set a, a quality service around latency, right? And you can have a time that you want to have this circuit for. So using the SDN controller, right, they can basically create these on bandwidth on-demand flows to keep that the, the, the big uh, data off their IP network. So they're to do we directly put that data onto the transport network. Right. So in this, um, in this demo, uh, uh, ESNet has an SDN controller called Oscars. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, secure, I forgot, the, I forgot for the, the acronym at the moment, sorry. But uh, um, that has a bandwidth on, on demand application Using um, OpenFlow, it's connecting to um, a network of four DTN nodes, two of them which are in their Brookhaven lab, two of them which are actually in their production network. 
And they use that, uh, and the, each of those uh, uh, DTN networks from Infinera have uh, the OTS model implemented, right, and it can be controlled with OpenFlow for provisioning, right? And we set up here three different paths, right? One through their production network, one through gray optics back to back between the two nodes in the lab, one using DWM connecting the nodes in the lab, right? Each of those have a different data, a, a data path available, a data amount available, bandwidth, this is 20, 20 gigs, 40 gigs, 100 gig. Each of them have a different laten latency. Each of them have a different hop counts, right? And then the SDN controller then can select a path based on, all right, so as I mentioned, you know, when a customer of uh, uh, Oscars wants to make a circuit reservation, they reserve you know, bandwidth and a delay and a time of day, right, and a destination. So using that, the SDN controller can then set up or provision a network, you know, and it can choose three different paths there based on the quality of service metrics, right? And in this demo, we did actually both implicit and explicit routing um, provisioning, right? So explicit meaning the controller had to know the whole topology of the network, had to know, you know, basically figure out what were the service metrics that can be obtained on each path. And also we did implicit, which basically allowed the network itself using its control plane to determine um, you know, whether, you know, what, are, what were the quality service metrics, based on the quality service metrics of the request, what was the best path to choose? All right, and, and so when the circuit's active, you can see you can also get uh, um, on the Oscar system uh, confirmation of that. So just in summary here, you know, I think the key things is that extending SDN to the transport layer gives you opportunity to really get multi-layer, multi-vendor, and multi-domain orchestration for optimizing uh, the network um, across um, all those different domains, right? Ability to speed up the delivery of, of services. If you, you know, like I said, the transport network has always been programmable. What it hasn't been has really been tied to the applications, right? Extending SDN to the transfer layer will make, you know, allow basically applications to get the access to that real-time um, uh, bandwidth as it needs it, can orchestrate it, uh, can uh, change the network as it needs to be the most optimized. Um, right. And it makes it much easier, like, as I was just mentioning, to see the network uh, and modify it. Any questions? Don't be shy, folks. There you go. Hi, uh, I've got yes. a question. Sure, thank um, you. So coming from the IP world, I'm, I'm pretty naive um, about the transport layer. When I think of, a top, of an IP topology, I think of various links and nodes where each link has, say, metrics and capacities associated with them. Uh, what type of topology information would be available in a, in a transport network? OK, good question. Uh, so, very, you know, depending on basically, uh, so transfer layers, there's a, actually transfer, in the transfer network, there's actually a fair number of different vendors have, uh, I guess, how much intelligence is in that, no that node, right? So some, some of the transfer nodes are just basically point to point. Some of them bring in more intelligence. For example, you know, in this case, you know, with an infinite network, you also have a switching element in addition to the DWM element, right? And you have a GMP list control plane. So actually you would see, you would get from uh, the transport network there a connectivity map very similar to uh, what you would see in IP, and you also get actually quality of service metrics, um, around, mainly around bandwidth and latency. Those are the, typically the two, uh, so available bandwidth, Right uh, and latency, the typically the matrix metrics that people want. Although sometimes a distance is an important metric, right? Or, and a hop count for a connection is another important metric. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. 
just one quick reminder, when you come up to the mic, uh, please state your name and your company affiliation. Thank you. Me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Victor Liu, Huawei Technologies. Okay. Uh, one question regarding to this real-time benefits on demand. Sure. What's your targeted uh, like time to provision this uh, 100G? Uh, what kind of distance you're looking at? Uh, so, I mean, the network itself is established, right? So within, right, and we were using uh, integrated switching, OTM switching into nodes, so actually it was basically it's seconds, right, to uh, provision that. So how about the distance you're looking at? Um, so, I mean, this was in a lab. Uh, you know, the distance doesn't really matter in this particular network. I think this was a couple hundred kilometers. Um, but do we actually do the whole thing on a nation-wide network, right? Uh, because you have the integrated switching and the GM plus control plane, you're able to basically abstract, um, you know, abstract that to just uh, a pool of bandwidth that you can control very quickly, right? The OTN switching allows you to basically make those connections immediately. The control plane allows you to do, you know, connection by connection. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.